On today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, we are reviewing the professional use case application capabilities, that's a mouthful, of the Beta FPV Pavo Pico equipped with the DJI 03 Air Unit. I had the opportunity to use this professionally for the first time, and I'm here to share the results with you. So without further ado, let's talk drones. What's up? It's Chris the Drone Geek and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Let's Talk Drones is brought to you by The Droning Company, the number one online resource for commercial remote pilots based in the United States. Make sure you check them out online at thedroningcompany.com and across all major social media platforms. So I've had the Pavo Pico now for around a month, maybe a month and a half at this point. And I gotta tell you, my initial review was sparkling. If you'd like to check that out, I've linked it up in one of the two corners here. I still haven't figured out which corner that would be with this new setup, but go ahead and click it if you want to see my initial review. But again, just to summarize it, it was sparkling for the Pavo Pico by Beta FPV, especially when you pair it with the DJI 03 Air Unit. It is a fantastic little machine. The only drawbacks on it that I found in it, that review had to do with the flight time and the handling when it comes to adverse conditions like wind or in this case even just a slight breeze. It is so small that it does get pushed around a little bit and of course flight time on FPV drones is not great anyway and it's especially true with a drone this size that uses 2S batteries that are around 450 to 650 milliamp hours in size. It drains pretty quick. However, that doesn't mean that this drone is not able to be used for a variety of different things. Whether it's hobby flying just for fun, you're posting to social media, or in my case, you find a reason to use it professionally, the Pavo Pico is extremely capable when paired with a visualization system like the DJI 03 Air Unit. Let me set the stage for you. I was hired by an engineering firm out of York, Pennsylvania called Graham Engineering. Essentially, what they needed me to do was fly a drone over their plastic extrusion line to show their partners and potential clients just how capable their machinery was, as well as their processes and procedures while manufacturing plastic products. And I went through a variety of options when it came to documenting this with a drone. I've got a few in my arsenal, as you know by now, of course, we've got the Mavic 3 with that four-third sensor, super impressive and great for just about any professional application. You've got the Mini 4 Pro, which is impressive in its own right and very capable in a much smaller form factor than even a Mavic 3. I've also got the DJI Avada. I've got the GEP RC Mark V, the GEP RC Cinelog 35, and finally, I've got the Pavo Pico. And as I went down the line, I found reasons to eliminate the other options. The Mavic 3, well, it's great. It's really good for exteriors, for wider scale shots. But when it comes to those tight cropped in shots, and especially shots where I want a little bit more dynamic movement, the Mavic 3 really doesn't fit the bill. So I ruled that out. And for the same reasons, I ruled the Mini 4 Pro out. Even though it's smaller and it would fit in that space a lot better than the Mavic 3, it still just didn't have quite the pace and the giddy up that I would need for a job like this. After I determined that that's how I wanted my shot to look, I wanted it to flow, I wanted it to be smooth and have a lot of dynamic motion in it, I realized that I needed to use one of my FPV drones. I went down the list and again, started to eliminate options before I finally came upon my final option. The Mark V is a great freestyle drone, but flying it indoors, well, I'm just not there yet skill-wise. The Cinelog 35 is still on the shelf because the DJI receiver that I have for it is still not fixed. I'm working on it. But even if I had the Cinelog 35 available, I don't know that I would have chosen it for the same reason I didn't choose the DJI Avada. And that is, even though it is even smaller than the Mini 4 Pro and is capable of that flowing movement that I want, it's still is just a little bit too large for some of the motion and movements and the gaps that I wanted to hit for this particular project. Not to mention having a smaller platform also gives me plenty of margin for error. And finally, as us land on the Pavo Pico. This was exactly the drone that I needed for that job. And I gotta tell you, when you pair it with the O3 Air Unit, it is as capable as any other Cinewoop drone. And I mean that. The only limitations, like I said in my initial review video, have to do with adverse conditions like wind or a slight breeze and flight time, of course. But for this project, I didn't need a lot of flight time and we were flying indoors in a very large factory that, I'll be honest, didn't have a lot of airflow to it, which was fine in the winter because it would have been cold if we had too much airflow. So I put the Pavo Pico into action and the footage that I got was fantastic. Don't believe me? See for yourself.
After seeing that footage, I will be curious to see what you have to say about the Pavo Pico and its first professional endeavor. Now, before we wrap this video up, I do want to address just a very tiny elephant in the room. I've had this conversation with a variety of different people, and it all really focuses around the same theme, and that is professional presentation in your drone operation. Some people approach me and they ask if it's important to have a drone that can really wow clients. And while there are scenarios where it is important to have something that's going to leave them with a very professional feel to your operation, it's not always necessary to have a DJI Inspire 3, to have an Autel Evo 2 version 3 Pro, a Mavic 3 Pro, whatever the case may be. It's not always necessary. Sometimes something like this is perfect for the job that you're being presented with. Take my client, for instance. Now, he never once doubted my abilities and he's always been very respectful in the way we communicate, but I couldn't help but notice a small smirk on his face when I pulled the Pavo Pico out of my bag and told him this was the drone that we were going to be using for the fly-through. Of course, I would expect that from anybody. If you see this and you see some of the toy-like features on it, I'll admit it does have some very toy-like features in the prop guards especially and some other parts as well. You might think, hmm, what am I really gonna get out of this guy? However, the validation that you get when you present them with the footage that was captured by the DJI O3 Air Unit, that buttery smooth 4K, 2.7K, or even 1080p, if you're really crazy, footage is just fantastic. It's so gratifying because you go from somebody looking at you going, I don't know about this, to being absolutely amazed. One of the first questions that he asked me after seeing the footage is, that all came off of this little drone. When I said yes, all he could say was, wow, fantastic. So long story short, don't always worry about how you present yourself professionally. Business is a lot about relationship building. So when you actually build the relationship, foster the relationship with your clients, it doesn't really matter too much how you present yourself professionally while you're on set. Of course, you wanna carry yourself in a respectful manner. You wanna take care of business not mess around too much, and of course, always take the task at hand very, very seriously. As long as you follow those guidelines, that relationship you build with your client should be more important than what you actually bring to accomplish the job, as long as it does meet the standards that the client needs. And in this case, the Pavo Pico didn't just meet those standards, it exceeded it. Okay, it's time to wrap the video up. Let me know what you thought of the Pavo Pico for professional use down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up icon. It gets this video out into the algorithm to more viewers like yourself. If you really like this video, you love drone content shot by drones, about drones, and for drone pilots, my friend, this is the channel for you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, and while you're at it, hit the bell icon too. Until next time, I'm Chris the Drone Geek, and I am out of here. See ya. Yo, yo, what you say? Steady screaming, yo, no rock.